Growing up in the 1980s, most of us kids believed that the year 2001 would be, well, kind of like the movie 2001. Space stations, colonies on the moon, etc. Omega Race, the game I grew up playing in my Commodore VIC-20, was supposed to take place in the year 2003, for example. And according to Back to the Future, just a few years later we'd have flying cars and hologram movies. Okay, so clearly our expectations were set too high, and when 2001 arrived it was kind of a letdown. But there were some devices that were not predicted by movies that actually turned out to feel rather futuristic, and this is an example of just such a device. Yep, it's a video camera from the year 2001, but this camera has a few tricks up its sleeve that makes it interesting, including a built-in photo printer right here. Thinking about camcorders, for example, one of the first compact all-in-one camcorders was the JVC GRC-1, which you may know as Marty McFly's camcorder in Back to the Future. It's sort of hard to believe that when looking at the timeline, more time has passed between the introduction of this Sony camera and today than there was between this product and Marty McFly's JVC camera from 1985. Yep, this product is 20 years old now. And while this camera does use 8mm cassettes, it actually records everything as a digital signal. The format is known as Digital 8 and was introduced in 1999. This camera actually belongs to a friend of mine who lives in town, and he also owns another piece of vintage technology, a 1988 Toyota MR2. Now we took a drive around town to take some footage with the camera, uh, so everything you're about to see was recorded on this 20 year old camera. That's a lot lower than I was expecting. <laughs> He actually let me take the driver's seat. It's been quite a while since I drove a manual transmission and uh, I was a bit nervous how I would do. All right. <laughs> it's been a while. Here we go. Well, I didn't stall the engine. <laughs> I guess it's like riding a bicycle. You never really forget. Uh, we actually had plans to take some video of the stone monuments in Arlington, but uh, there was a football game happening that day and that part of town was impossible to find a parking spot. So we drove around for a bit and one thing that uh, I noticed immediately about this camera is the image stabilization, or rather the lack of it. And actually this camera has Sony's steady shot technology which was enabled at the time of the recording but it was just no match for driving on the bumpy road. Uh, needless to say, that technology has come a long way over the last 20 years. It does have a pretty good zoom lens though. Anyway, we eventually stopped at Ripley's Believe It or Not. Uh, it's a wax museum, we didn't go inside, but there were plenty of interesting things in the parking lot to take a video of. Actually, um, what we were really looking for were some colorful things to take still photos of to try out the built-in printer. So I thought we'd just try out the camera here in the studio and um, kind of see what it looks like in here. What would it be like if I had to film my show on a camera like this? And I uh, also have a little treat for you. This is the Commodore 128 version of Petsky Robots, which runs on dual monitors. Thought you might want to get a little sneak preview of that. And so we'll just have a look around the rest of the studio. Uh, back here I've got the Laser 128 up and running. And uh, here's studio room two, and one thing that's super obvious about working with this camera inside the studio is how narrow the field of view is. It's really hard to capture any footage in here. There is a wide angle lens option, but I'm not using it right now. So the first thing I want to do is actually try printing a photo from the little printer, and I'm not actually sure what sort of technology this is. It actually has some sort of little dry ink cartridge, which uh, I'll show in a minute, but uh, whatever it is, it still works after 20 years. It actually pulls the paper in and out three different times and adds a little more color with each pass. And you know what? It actually doesn't look half bad. I mean, these photos are really small, but uh, even up close like this, it has plenty of detail. Of course, it's basically NTSC resolution, so probably 720 by 480 or something like that. But the colors are very vibrant. Of course, if you want to copy the video off, you'll need to connect it to FireWire. I mean, you could capture it from the analog output, but uh, using FireWire keeps the signal digital from the time you film it to the time it ends up on your computer. And uh, we should use an era-appropriate computer. <laughs> yep, uh, this computer here came out the same year as the camera, so it's a perfect match. It even has a FireWire port. 
Unfortunately, I ran into one stupid problem. Um, I couldn't find a copy of QuickTime Pro that works on this machine. And as you can see, movie recording is grayed out in the regular version of QuickTime. You had to buy a license for QuickTime Pro, and I spent hours trying to locate one. Of course, Apple doesn't even sell it anymore, so after a while, I just gave up. Instead, I decided to go with an older MacBook that still has FireWire on the side. And it has a little bit more modern version of QuickTime and had no trouble capturing the video. Now, one thing I'd like to mention about this camera is that it does have an unusually large display for the time. In fact, it's even larger than many camcorders today. Speaking of capturing, this camera has another nifty feature. A former coworker of mine, Brian Hughes, uh, recently found these old VHS tapes from AST. Now, one of them is about the essential laptops, and uh, I'm not sure what these other two tapes are. They're still shrink-wrapped, so we're going to have to cut them open. Anyway, the thing is, the camera has analog inputs and will convert any analog source over to FireWire. And it does a really good job. Um, it's actually one of the best video capture devices probably ever made. And so it allowed me to capture the video from these old cassettes. It really wasn't anything terribly interesting. Uh, one cassette has an internal training video on how to repair the Essentia 800 and 900 laptops. Um, however, uh, it was really well done considering this was made in 1994. The other video was a few years later, and this was a recording of a live Q&A video that they broadcast on a satellite TV channel and allowed third-party service centers to call in with questions. It's actually really long and boring, and I didn't recognize anyone from the video except this guy here named Mujib. Uh, he was in charge of the entire tech support facility where I worked, but uh, I never really spoke to him. Anyway, as you can see, the image quality of the video capture is second to none. So what else could we try capturing? I have my Commodore Plus 4 set up here, and uh, sure enough, I can connect it to the video input and see the screen. I've been testing out the Plus 4 version of Petsky Robot, so I'll go ahead and load this up. And there we go. Now, believe it or not, I can press the photo button here and it will store this photo to the SD card just like any other photo. And of course, guess what you can do with any photo stored on the SD card? That's right, you can print it. So uh, let's print a screenshot of Petsky Robots. I'll spare you the nearly two minutes it takes to print the photo, but uh, here you go. It actually looks amazingly good. About my only complaint is it doesn't show the lights on the buildings very well. I mean, you can see them, but they just don't show up as well as they do on the actual game. But uh, otherwise, it looks great. So I hooked up the C128 so I could take a few more screenshots of popular games. I mean, in theory, you could connect a Nintendo, Sega Genesis, or whatever, as long as it has a composite or S-Video output. Oh, and uh, did you know this thing has two color screens? Uh, yep, if I look inside the little viewfinder here, you'll find a second full color screen. So uh, here are some of the other screenshots I took. So uh, yeah, if you want physical screenshots from your games and you don't mind that they're credit card sized, uh, this thing does an amazing job. Okay, so in summary, we have this device that was made 20 years ago, and it was a digital video camera that in and of itself was a bit unusual at the time. It was also a digital still camera. It was also a analog to digital capture device and a photo printer, all in one. <laughs> Plus, it also had some other neat features like night vision and stuff like that, which was pretty cool at the time. But you know what the most amazing thing about this camera is? The battery. According to my friend Sean, this is the original battery from 20 years ago and it still works. Granted, it doesn't work for hours like it's supposed to, but I think we got about 45 minutes out of it uh, when we were driving around town. So anyway, I know it's a little bit off from my usual content. But I thought that this was at least uh, worth um, a, a short video just to talk about some of the cool things that came out in the early 2000s. There is something else I wanted to tell you about in this video. Um, my brother and I and another uh, friend of ours named Craig have been doing this podcast for a couple months now called the Geek Bits Podcast. So uh, it comes out about once a week and it's just the three of us sitting around talking about all kinds of philosophical things, whether it be science fiction or D&D or video games or whatever. If you're interested, I'll put a link down in the description. But that about wraps it up for this episode. As always, thanks for watching.